Hello, today is March 20th. Pay your bills if you haven't already. Mine are all paid for this month, but just FYI. You know who has a monthly bill this month? The cats? Apple. <laughs> and it's, you know, relatively about the same amount that you're paying this month. A tiny, tiny amount if you're Apple. <laughs> Apple has been dealt a legal blow as the jury awards Qualcomm $31 million. Like, that's why did they even go to trial? That's not even their electric bill. Probably not. <laughs> Probably nowhere near what they pay in electric. It's a, this is the patent case that's been going on for a while. The whole, like, you know, Apple versus Qualcomm. And it's like, don't use our radios, use our radios. And it's like, I mean, this is a really, like, really, really, really nasty fight. And it's down to $31 million on a company that's worth a trillion dollars. But is a dollar forty one a phone? But it's actually like I think Qualcomm is happy because it sort of vindicates them, mm. and in the future they can probably reference this. Yeah, there there probably yes. will be other patent cases with other companies as well. Yeah, and you're saying that uh, Apple is not acting correctly when it comes to the whole radio debate, even though they're on to uh, pure Intel at this point. So, but the thing that that is still not clear to me in this patent dispute is 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 this legit patents or is this a patents on rounded corners? And this low of an award would suggest it's a patent on rounded corners, but I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Oh, it had to do with, uh, it was about the radios, but you know, well, I mean, you know, as far as radio science goes, it was about how they use them more than the patents themselves, I think. But yeah, you're probably right. It's, it's just, you know, a slap fight. <laughs> so even when you score a hit, you, you. No, it's $31 million. It doesn't really matter to either side, but you feel good about yourself. Girls, right? stop fighting. You're both pretty. Let's move on. <laughs> but I'm the prettiest. <laughs> My rounded corners are more rounded. You know who the prettiest man in the world is, according to a lot of materialistic women? Jeff Bezos. It is Jeff Bezos. Yeah. And not only, is, not only is he the prettiest... But he's the smartest when it comes to ruthlessly running a company. <laughs> Amazon gets an edge with its secret squad of PhD economists. This article talks about how Amazon, not just economists, but Amazon is is hiring a lot of smart people. And that the U.S. produces like a thousand PhD economists a year. And Amazon's basically hiring them all. So it's hard for other people to get PhD economists. And they are reinventing the... Amazon sells so much stuff. And they have so many metrics on the stuff that they sell. And they have, like, you know, third-party sellers. They can measure their own inflation. And that's what they're doing. They're like, oh, yeah, the U.S. government measure of inflation? That's kind of flawed. We'll do our own. <laughs> and it's probably going to be way better. Their economy is probably more successful than most countries at this point. They also, you ever look at the, uh, was it like the million price index or whatever? MIT does one. Oh yeah, and it's way higher rate than the government will admit. Yeah, uh, just like the cost of living for basic supplies like groceries and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and they're just tracking a million prices as it yeah. went. And Amazon probably got more than that if you really think about it. Yeah, incredible. Also, uh, 160 grand a year is the starting rate for economists at that level. Ooh. So, if you're trying to make a decision about what to do with your life, <laughs> maybe hey, think yeah. about that. There's only a thousand people a year. Doing this, and you start out making 160, and you, you know, you're already technology leaning. If you're watching this, probably, and they talk about mm -hmm. how those economists are using AI and machine learning and all the cool tools. So, if you've got that minor in computer science, or just well, yeah, dabble in computer science, that was actually one of the things. So, if they went to the like the the trade conference or whatever, where you seduce the the economists to come and work for you, and the big sales pitch wasn't you're going to get these benefits, and you're going to get this pay. It's have you ever seen a data trove like we have? Look at all the points of data that we have. You tell me you don't want to play in this? Just look at it. And they're right. And then they yeah. just, you know, they pull it off like marbles in their hands. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Scrooge McDuck. It's like, have you ever seen a money bin? You want to go for a swim in the money bin? Who goes for a swim in their money? That's the data. The data pile. Just get in there. Roll around. You get paper cuts, though. It's, it's painful. But they'll, they'll clean you up after, though. AT&T merged... And uh, they said, you know what? After we merge, we are not going to raise prices. We would never do that. Black and white. I'm going to say it right now. We covered it. We said it repeatedly. Don't make me say this again. 
No new taxes. I mean, we're not going to raise prices, is what they said. <laughs> By guess merging. What, guess what happened? Yeah. That's AT&T has jacked up TV prices again after merger, despite promising it wouldn't happen. Not only did it did not happen, they literally testified before Congress and said uh, the prices have to go down after the merger because we're uh, eliminating some redundancies in both companies. There their fingers crossed. So, it's fine then. Doesn't but count. They think that maybe if they raise it a little bit more, people will want TV that much more. <laughs> yeah, the specific thing, the, the way that they're they're doing away with the forty dollar package, it's a fifty dollar package now. They're they're quote unquote giving you HBO, but you could get HBO before for only five dollars a month. So in the the best possible way that you can spend this is it's a five dollar per month increase. But the worst possible way no. you can spend this is it's like more than ten. You're wrong, because. 2018 HBO was worth five dollars. <laughs> 2019 HBO is worth fifteen. So you're actually saving money. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. There's also this broadcast fee that they're allowed to charge that's also going up, which is one of those sham fees that the previous FCC guy was getting ready to shut down, but not a cheap pie. That and that the insanity that I just described about 2019 HBO being worth more is the harken back to the other uh, article. That's literally how the American government. Adjust inflation. They're like, oh, your phone is better this year. So the price going up isn't really a price increase. <laughs> it so, does more stuff. So it's, yeah, the cost of living didn't go up. No. Your phone is so good now. You don't even need a home computer. <laughs> Things are just getting so much better <laughs> that you pay more for them. That's, that's not inflation. I'm sorry. You're not getting any more money from the government. The other thing that Amazon loves to do is lobby the government. In fact, they love it so much. That it's another thing that Jeff Bezos can say, I'm number one. <laughs> Amazon lobbied the government, more government entities than any other public U.S. company last year. So I tried to figure out what exactly they were lobbying on because this article doesn't talk about much. It talks about a couple of things, but it's not really clear. So uh, uh, they mentioned a couple of. Yeah, one of the big ones was. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, healthcare, transportation, defense, and labor regulation. I bet labor regulation is yeah. the big one. Yeah. Uh, the healthcare one was the one that I thought would need the most modifications. And that's so that they can do like the whole Amazon direct hospital pills, whatever. Yeah. Because the profit margin is there. Well, look at it. Look, if you order pills from Canada, it's going to cost a tiny fraction of what it costs to get your prescription filled here, here in America. And I've got news for you those are the same pills. Same pills. No, they've got syrup on them because the pharmacist handled them. I mean, they're much nicer. Did you get a discount? I mean, I could go for syrup It actually syrup makes pills. them better. Yeah, they probably yeah, be better. they got a more pleasant pills. attitude when they come from Canada. <laughs> yeah, they're not as combative. And uh, the, uh, the, the we should point out, though, uh, Amazon is number one in terms of instances of lobbying. And government agencies lobbied. But number one in dollar amount still goes to good old alphabet. So, more money. Just not spreading it around. So what you're saying is it's yet another example of Google, you know, is large ass versus Amazon Bezos's laser precision with how he spends his money. It's a scalpel versus a shotgun. (laughs) No money, less problems. (laughs) And speaking of $10 a month. Oh, I caught you drinking your beverage. Oh, no. Uh, Christy, you do this. Verizon says 5G network will cost an extra $10 a month. Is anybody surprised? Like, why? why, Like, this isn't. I suppose this is news. But it's a whole extra G. I mean, what do you expect? If AT&T were going to charge $10 a month for that extra G where they just changed it, like they literally just changed <laughs> the software, I would be so pissed. So if pissed. they thought they could get away with it. Now, this is there's only one phone that can do this so far. So this is like early, early, early adopter. In one place in America. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be that $10. So really probably not worth it but i'm sure some people the same kind of people who have to have that new iphone every year are going to want this they did this with 4g as well when 4g rolled out it was like oh that costs more you think they'll give you a little sticker to put on the back of your phone so everybody can know that you're better than them and you have a better connection than they do or do you just kind of casually like tip your phone forwards (laughs) oh my gosh it's got the 5g it's like, oh, let me show you this video. Oh, wow. Look how fast this is. This is amazing. That wouldn't happen around here, though. <laughs> a lot of spots where you're still getting 3G. Oh, yeah. We're, no, we're not getting 5G towers no. anytime soon. No. We're here in, uh, you know what? I'm fine. I'm fine with 4G. I'm fine with the classic style of cancer. I don't want the newfangled <laughs> cancer. Why not just get both? 
I, <laughs> give your doctors a challenge. <laughs> Huawei, we, of course, we talked about the the conflict and the, the 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 submarine battle that they're having and all the craziness. And it turns out, like in war, you always have to have a plan B, right? And it's been released that Huawei does in fact have a plan B. Huawei confirms it has a backup OS in case it's cut off from Android. Now, why would it be cut off from Android? Well, if you've been mm. watching the Level One news or just following the news in general, Huawei is in a bit of a spot right now with. Uh, international dealing with iran and some financial fraud and maybe some security problems what do you think trump would have to put on the table that google wants in order to get them to cut huawei off from android Hmm. does he just have to be like all right from now on the data collection no questions no questions out just do what you want i mean they would probably just collude on that anyway It's like, I won't do anything. It's like, if you let us collect everything, I won't say anything. Okay, deal. Done. <laughs> anything we find about you, I you know, throw this on the table too. <laughs> Trump's supposed to be a good negotiator, so he should be able to get more. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you're a budget gamer, and you know, a lot of you are, a lot of you, when we make comments about old hardware, you're like, oh, you're putting down my hardware. <laughs> and uh, maybe if you're ready for an upgrade, but you don't have many dollars in the bank, Good news. NVIDIA's GTX 1660, not TI. Smooth 1080p gaming for less. It's like $219, but the Amazon link is $279 for the EVGA. That's the TI, That's though. the TI. Yeah. It's like $220, give or take. So this is to try to dethrone NVIDIA. NVIDIA, or uh, AMD has been like... Say. NVIDIA's Wait, trying to dethrone AMD. There we go. Because like the 580 and the 590 have been like the leader forever in like the value category. Because... It's just so darned inexpensive. So here, here come the sixteen sixty with its six gigs, and ooh. and it does outperform the five ninety just a little ooh. bit, yeah. just a little. Which they, they did that on purpose. Yeah, that's what it's exactly where they wanted it to be. <laughs> you got to give them credit for. Uh, they might not be great right now at pushing the boundary all that much because the like the new flagship cards aren't that much better. But when it comes to just seating one right where they want it in the performance profile. They are that much better if you're willing to spend like $1,400 on a graphics card. Well, that's my point. But even then, why are you getting like 30% or 20% or something like that? But if they want to just really put one right where they want it, it's like, all right, just nudge it a little bit past the 590. (laughs) They're really good at that. No. And they're hitting that price point and the performance point. And it actually is, uh, it's the same as the TI. They just turned off some of the hardware. Yeah. So... Somebody in, in before somebody figures out how to turn it back on. That'd be cool. Probably illegal though, <laughs> especially in the EU <laughs> where you're not allowed to EU. flash yeah. the firmware. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So don't get caught doing that. Uh, this was big news this week. I cannot get super excited about this. Have you ever used the the Steam Link at all? Yeah. So I don't care about the hardware, but here's here's one that you might get excited about a little bit. Is that also includes the beta version of the Android app. So you can do Steam Link anywhere will let you stream your PC's games on the go if you've got, you know, one of the devices. Nobody has the devices. But on Android, you can download the Steam Link beta. That works too. So on an Android device, you can play your games over the internet. As long as it's got hardware decode, the latency is pretty good. I still don't care. I hate playing games on my phone. Yeah. Well, you can you hook up a mouse and keyboard to a tablet. Mm. I'm still not interested. Uh-huh. I don't know. That makes it a little more interesting. If you're on really. if you're on Apple, I'm sorry. Apple uh, has a stick up in their butt about this already, and they're they're not they're not letting Valve do it, but they're letting other companies do it, and I don't get why. Because Valve hasn't paid them, probably. <laughs> but on your Android phone, you can pair a controller with it. You can pair the, like the Steam controller. You can pair with your phone. So like you know, if you want to do Rocket League with a controller on like a tablet, you can. And we also talked about uh, the consoles are doing this too. Last week we talked about the PS4. That was on Apple. Yeah. And the Xbox doing it oh, too. Oh yeah, the PS like how can PS4s do it but not Steam? That makes no sense. Yeah. Now you know what I am excited about. The side story here. Dwarf, Dwarf Fortress, Fortress is coming to Steam with graphics and mod support. Oh wow! Of course, you can already get it for free, including all the graphics and mods. But it'll bring new people into the Dwarf Fortress world. I think if they charge five dollars for it, it'd be worth the convenience of it. I don't it, know cause... if they've named a price, but yeah, I think five dollars is probably ten. I'd go ten. I mean, just the convenience of having it. I mean, there's there's a, there was some game that I bought not on Steam years ago, and I rebought it again on Steam because it was like I don't want to bother trying to find the disc. Yeah, and that's and that was a sad. Like I had crossed some you crossed some, that line. It's a normie line. Yeah, some line somewhere there, and it was like because when I originally bought the game, I was like, no, 
no, I must not give into the Steam DRM. And now it's like, it's oh, like, but it's so convenient. All my things are in one place. <laughs> we got a great story about that topic in the nonsense section. Uh, but yeah, we might try that on the Twitch stream now that it's got graphics and people Ooh. can actually follow it. Because people love the you'll have to drive the builder games. I'm on Twitch stream. I feel like I'm equipped to drive Frostpunk now, but I'm, I would not be equipped to drive. You were doing pretty good. Like Wendell admitted before the we started the news, he's been looking up like Frostpunk. Uh, oh really? Yeah, walkers. Like strategy. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't <laughs> understand some of the options. Online. I didn't even understand the whole gathering posts coal thumper thing. I mean, I just didn't didn't understand the mechanic. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, it's a little we'll weird. Because it. Yeah. it was like, do I have to send the children to work in the coal piles alone at night? I mean. No, you want them in safe jobs, at least if you do the law. Well, that is a safe job. But it, is it considered a safe job? But they also get really sick, because that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to use a gathering post, which I guess it says in the tutorial. But no, we knew that. that. No, yeah, we, we did that. We did well, that gathering post. It turns, you have to build two per thumper, though, because they produce so much coal. Somebody in the chat told us that. You missed it. I missed that, too. I knew you well, had one. Makes no sense. Those of you who are stinging from that last story, because you're like, I'm an iPhone normie, and I want to play Steam games, well... Maybe not. Maybe you're not going to play Steam games, but you can play PS4. And now, <laughs> Microsoft has announced Xbox Live for any iOS or Android game. What? Apple. App, why does Apple have a stick up their butt? This, I mean, Microsoft. Microsoft beat Apple. This is not your grandfather's Microsoft. <laughs> uh, also works on the PS4 and the uh, Switch. Nice. Breaking down the walls. This is like, uh, this is almost the same as the Berlin Wall coming down. I don't know if that's true. I think it is. Mm. Yeah, it's going to bring people together. Mm. It's destroy communism. In this case, the uh, <laughs> Apple is the one that's clinging to the wall like the Soviets. That makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because now communism is super popular among, among young people in America who want to destroy the corporations. Well, the, it, they don't, it, they just want free stuff. They're, they're like, oh, I should... engagement challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that the free stuff that they get isn't HP laptops because that could end terribly. <laughs> the reject HP laptops. HP recalls more laptops for fire and burn hazards. And it's really funny it's because it's a bad time to be a college student right a, now. Apparently, this, the HP like PR rep corrected Lori Grunin over and over again to be like, no, we're not recalling the laptops. It's just the battery. And it's like, well, how, how do you propose I send you just the battery? It's like, no, the battery's built in. You have to send us the whole laptop. So are you recalling laptops? <sighs> no, we are just recalling the battery. <laughs> Here's the weird thing about it. They knew about it and they issued a press release, but it has to go to like the national recall database, but the government was shut down. So uh. they're like, uh, yeah, Burning laptops? Dude, I don't know. This is not my job, so just get back to us whenever the government... <laughs> that doesn't sound like a big deal. Let's worry about it later. So if you get an HP laptop, be sure to check the list of recalled laptops here. You're going to get a free battery. If nothing else, you're going to be without your laptop for like a Today, week. I don't know if they gave... They didn't but, give uh, a bullet list. Oh, yeah, there it is. ProBook. 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 X. There's just a lot of numbers here. Pavilion. Just check it. A lot of ProBook. I think that it's in this day and age with engineering, I think we can make laptops with removable batteries again. I think we can do that. Yeah, we can make phones with them too. They just don't want just to. Don't want, yeah. I love the LG G5. I thought that was the cleverest design for a removable battery because it like the thing pops off and the, the battery slides out like a cartridge. It's great. And that so phone's tiny. Make you nostalgic for the console days. Yeah. Cartridge consoles. Spotify had some angry words for Apple this week. <laughs> and not just angry words, there's, they snitched on them. There's an Apple Spotify splat going on. Splat? Splat. Splat. Spat. 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 Some kind of, like, it's it's another girl fight. I mean, they're just... They're... Uh, but see, this was a girl fight, and then one of them ran and grabbed on the teacher, in this case being the EU's skirt, and said, uh, help me. This was, a, this was a girl fight. Before the EU got involved, they were pulling each other's hair. Somebody might have got a chunk of scalp. No, you, you get the earrings. Broken That's nail. That's why you tell your girlfriends oh. hold your earrings. Yeah, broken nail, so they're like <laughs> bleeding from the from the cuticle. Oh, it's so bad. So consumers and innovators win on a level playing field. Yeah. So this this one's the one. Is this one? No, this is this Spotify. is Spotify.com. So this, yeah, a little biased here. Yeah. So Spotify on the Apple App Store. So there's a free version. And there's a pay for version. Pay for version. Apple wants its thirty percent cut. 
Spotify says, no, that will make us not competitive, and especially not competitive with Apple Music. So we're not doing it. So Apple is saying, oh, we want, you know, you participated in our ecosystem. That's the fee. You got to participate. And like I read Apple's response and I sat there the whole time thinking, Apple, you use a lot of GPL version two open source code and you won't move to the GPL version three. You're shipping obsolete versions of Bash with Mac OS. And these same arguments that you're making against Spotify for the whole Apple App Store thing would apply to the open source software that you're cups. Need I even talk about cups? So yeah, Apple's very disingenuous here. Not the Spotify. I mean, it looks like two people that I don't care about fighting, and it's not even entertaining. But oh, as I say, I would think it would be entertaining a it's little not, bit. It's not because it's just deep down. They're both like deep. Down. Whoever wins, everybody else loses. This is only slightly more entertaining than Qualcomm. Mm. If I were Apple, you know what I would do? I would spin off Apple Music and make them pay thirty <laughs> percent. Why not? <laughs> well, it's going right back in your pocket, right? Uh, remember the Quadriga CX? Now, let's let's talk about the timeline of Quadriga CX. Quadriga CX CEO dies. Then it's found that cold wallets are locked. No one has the keys. Oh. What can we do? The customer is screwed, but there's hope. They might break into the, the cold wallet, right? And they did. They break into the cold wallet. Zero balance. <gasps> Zero balance. <laughs> $130 million in the win. Oh, and then that's like, it's really getting juicy. It's a great mystery. And now, yet another twist. Uh, Redditor claims that the exchange used to trade against its customers without assets to back them. And that's pretty much true of every cryptocurrency exchange. Yeah, so in other words... Why is anybody surprised? You deposit Bitcoin, which is has value. You know, A lot of people are going to argue, oh, yeah, it's, it has value. You can trade it for real money. And then they buy your Bitcoin with Quadriga funny money, except the account buying your Bitcoin is not another person. It's Quadriga pretending to be another person. So they just took the Bitcoin and transferred it out to an actual person, which leaves the exchange with a net loss of total value. Funny money. But that's not the money that's been lost. No, they lost the actual Bitcoins, but even before that. <laughs> so out. who knows? Who knows how corrupt this whole thing was? So but that, that might be its own set of financial crimes. I think the, the moral of the story is don't put your Bitcoin in these crazy exchanges. <laughs> so be it, careful. Turns out. Does anybody remember Angry Birds? Seems what? like a, a lifetime ago. What? It was like 2000. Flappy Birds. 13, 2014. <laughs> Flappy Bird was just one bird. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have any friends. Angry Birds. That, Angry Birds, they, they made a movie, movie, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, but that had to tank, right? Did anybody yeah. watch well, that? Well, I no. think kids did, but. Well, they admit kids. that Rovio, the developer, you know, they they got a little too close to the sun there. <laughs> and they have since lost 50% of their value since an IPO. They went public. <laughs> Angry Birds went public. But they've got a new plan that's going to save the business. Angry Birds developer seeks backers for its Netflix of game service. Why wouldn't you just take the money and retire? Like, if this is the best you can come up with, <laughs> it's time to like be like, no. Oh, is this just for mobile games? Because that might be... I could see a, a casual normie. Like, if you had just a marketplace of games where you didn't have to, like, deal with the store, maybe? I could do a Netflix of games on one-tenth the budget of whatever it is that they're spending without even knowing what their budget is that will be just as successful. Well, yes. So to answer your question, Krista, it is mobile games. And they are saying that what is being described here could not exist under the 4G technology. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we have 5G, the time is right for them to step in and unleash this product that they've been planning. Do investors really buy that? Well, we're going to see because they're trying to crowdfund. And, uh, <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> <laughs> get some investors on there. And so, yeah, they want to launch the the five G. We're worse than those judges service. on that. What is it? Some reality show? What's a, what's a reality show that has judges that That's are overly the, judgmental? All of them. America's Got Talent. Yeah, so we're more, more judgier than the America's Got Talent. It's like, oh, you're gonna you gonna mm, crowdfunding? Yeah. Mm. I remember the voice because it killed that girl with a self driving car. <laughs> the other thing oh, about yeah. this uh, this Angry Birds network is it will store nothing on your phone except the app. 
the game will be 100 percent streamed. That claim. Oh, that's no local that caching. Strange. Like it would, it would be more successful to just do a, a like an app co-op. Though, it's like the Flappy Bird guy. It's like, look, if your app is popular, we'll pay you. But participate in our network. You get a minimum income if you're a developer that's just like, you know, reasonable. But if you have an Angry Birds level of success, you know, you might get a million dollars. That that business model might be profitable. If, but again, thinking about the market there, like. If you're a casual normie and you have to switch phones, do you lose your progress on your game if it saved your progress? No, it's, I imagine it's all in the cloud. Yeah, and that then wouldn't the people like that? Well, you could you could do that with standalone games. You just develop yeah, Steam a does that. Yeah, Steam does. Yeah, but I don't know. Do mobile games do that? Because like you Some guys, do. seems like you have to re-download and then you lose all your progress on your game. Some do. There's a couple versions of Pixel Dungeon that will actually let you save your progress Pixel in the Dungeon cloud. Pixel Dungeon is like. The king of all mobile games. Mobile games will let you do that, but only if you give them access to your pictures. <laughs> they need that. That's important. Why does it need my call logs <laughs> and text messages? I don't. I don't not understand. just your pictures, but your actual camera, so it can watch you play. The right, game. Yeah, your microphone, so it can voice confirm that that's actually your save game. <laughs> it's training the AI. It's like what makes the mobile user the most angry. We talk about smart TVs a lot. And uh, just the phrase smart TV has become something of a, a nope. curse in my mind. No one wants a smart TV. I don't know. It kind of does. They're selling a lot of them. And, uh, of course, now we know that you're not going to be able to reflash the firmware, at least in the <laughs> EU. Why would you want to reflash the firmware, you ask? Smart TVs could get annoying ads, just like your web browser does. It's developing an open standard with nine partners. So all these TV makers are getting together to be like, look, we can't afford to be software developers because of the razor-thin margins on TVs. <sighs> Let's come up with a standard that we all can agree on and then sell our ads on TVs, and that's how we'll make money. Now, you might be thinking, oh, my TV already has ads. What are you talking about? We're talking about a TV that superimposes ads on your Netflix, for example. You know how Netflix is ad-free? How would you like some banners to pop up while you're watching things on Netflix? That's what they want. And they want to standardize it among all the TV companies so nobody like sues anybody else. Or nobody can say, oh, we don't have ads. Buy our TV. How long until TV programming has just like a black box at the bottom? It's Where like, the actual program is? <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, oh, I see you're watching 1.9 to 1 content, uh, aspect ratio content. Let's use the black bars at the bottom to have a, a crawl or ads or something. It's like, yeah. Well, those like Bloomberg type channels, yeah. have you watched one of those recently? Like. There's four crawls and 20 stock tickers, and there's just a little window up at the top with a talking head, and it's just so much information. But they did point out that I think Samsung already tried and had to pull back. They were running ads on local media you were streaming from a media server. Craziness. Don't buy a smart TV. I don't want your advertisements. Don't, I don't. I don't care. I had a I had a Vizio TV that got one of the auto updates over the firmware, and it started to do that kind of stuff. And it was, I noped out of that so hard, I reset it, cleared the wireless, and blocked all the IP addresses from the logs. Good luck, Vizio. Yeah, but then you don't have Wi-Fi to stream your stuff. Uh, no, that's Raspberry Pi's job now. Yeah, that's what you got to do. I uh, you got to buy the monitor, <laughs> the big monitor, not the TV, because, and you just got to serve your own stuff. Yeah. That's the only choice. <laughs> Here's another story that's trying to block us out, trying to ad block us. They but it's... fund our awesome content. Oh, yeah, and it's so awesome. <clears throat> Digital trends. But we can still read the header. You're not going to stop us. <laughs> I mean, hell, we can probably just... Amazon Kia EV Charger Sales Program. We're helping you by driving traffic to your articles, I think, maybe, possibly. Quite a little yeah, bit. Kia. Kia is getting in on the electric car thing with Amazon. What? And it's talking about the, the Charger. So, like, the Charger is, like, $600, give or take? Uh, they run between five and six, but this is not uh, a single charger. It's a standard. But it is a standard, yeah. There's three different brands that are in on it. But yeah, you can uh, buy these. They've got the electric vehicles and then the assisted electric vehicles. So if you have the 120 volt at your house, you're looking at a 33-hour charge on the Kia. Not great. But if you get the uh, 240 or 220 installed then five hours, six hours. You know, plug it up at night, you're good to go the next day. 32 amps. So they want to, it's a it's a program where they go, they vet the people. They're like, this is a good product. We will set up the installation for you. You go and buy it through Amazon and Amazon will install it. And you don't have to think about it. 
<laughs> so it's like the uh, when I go to buy like a hard drive on Amazon, it's like get a professional installation for only eighty nine more dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Except <laughs> for most people, you probably don't want to tool around in your electrical system, <laughs> especially at the higher voltage. It's fine unless you know what you're doing. It's fine. Yeah, hard drive. That's kind of simple. Uh, the EU would have us believe that that 220 is safer than 110. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you cannot flash a custom firmware on your electrical system in the EU. <laughs> this is a very interesting story. Uh, it's not huge news, but it, it, we always Speak when we talk about yourself, I love IKEA. When we talk about 3D printing, my big argument against 3D printing is like, yeah, it's cool, but oh, what are we going to do with it? It what, looks cool. What's the purpose of it? It was a vase. It is watertight. It has no... We pr- tested that one. Did we? we? Yeah. We did. It I has... Water down. Well, okay. A vase. That's... I, I printed another one that's shorter and squatter, and it is also watertight. For a smaller flower? Yes. But still, I'm going to say not super useful. But these things, for some people at least, super useful. IKEA's 3D printed add-ons make its furniture more accessible for people with disabilities. I made the mistake of watching the video before reading the article, and I... I I'm ashamed almost to admit that I think the actor they hired doesn't actually have a disability. I think oh, he's, really? I think <laughs> I, I think he's the video. I think he's faking. Like and it's oh. and it's like I don't should I be offended? I don't I know. I don't know. Don't they uh aren't these like some famous people with disabilities? Is it? I think so. Cuz I mean he it seems like he's got problems with his arms I but like the cross. I think we have a cross that's open in the office. Well, that is a dark acting job if that's true. Oh, I'm not playing it for the people to see. Sorry. Here he well, is. It was. It's for the end. It's not the. It's not the stand. Because I mean. Well, here he is. It, they want. It wants to make the thing taller. Right. So it's it's hard to get up off the couch if he, you have a certain. He definitely system. could get up though. Like that guy. Could definitely <laughs> well, get up. Well, maybe. You know that. <laughs> I don't know, dude. He. I don't think he's faking one. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that. Uh, this is. It's. It's a dark debate. It, it was with the here. door. Yeah. The one with the door. Yeah, that one. Is that the same guy? Yeah. It looks like a shelf. Is it the no, same that's guy? not the same guy. They're dressed kind of the same. Maybe that was my mistake. I thought they were the same guy. See, I was watching this and I was like, is that, I don't, is he acting? I don't know. Uh, oh, it'll make it easier to open the door. Couldn't you just put hardware on there? Oh, okay. That way he doesn't have to have the fine motor control. That makes sense. But here's the thing. Yeah, you could you could buy a system for this, but they're saying. Just 3D print it. 3D print it. And here's a. Which is uh, awesome. Here's a, like a little catalog of all the various things that they, you can 3D print that works with their products. That's crazy that they're like, we had an opportunity to just sell you something, but instead we're just going to let you 3D print it. I didn't realize the couch lift was 3D printed. I don't think that's safe. If well, it was, it's just yeah, the... If the temperature changes, they get kind of brittle. Mm. Like the, the filament stuff. There's probably a weight limit. Probably uh, not a very generous weight limit. One person on the couch at a time. <laughs> <laughs> when you put the, the little boots on it. I mean, I'm glad that they're doing that. I, I don't mean that in any way to be offensive or anything, but it was just like, did they, oh my God, did they hire an actor to, to act with it? Or does, because it was, I don't know. Oh, you know, he should, they should have got the uh, the kid from Breaking Bad. Yeah. yeah. He actually has palsy. I bet his quote is real high, though. Um, yeah, he's he's probably outside of their budget. Uh, well, they got a lot I mean, of money. I mean, that kid is big, but. Last anyway. week. Oh, I'm sorry. Unless it just anyway. <laughs> just uh, on. Last week we talked about the Model Y, and that was like the big reveal. I think when we recorded the news, it had not actually been revealed, but no, it did I later didn't. get revealed. We, we successfully predicted the shenanigans. People weren't super enthusiastic about it. It's Tesla SUV. Okay. And we predicted uh, the refresh for the, uh, the sedan and all that. Uh, but then they had a video about the Model Y, and at the very end... There was a little teaser image of, what was it? A truck. The Tesla pickup truck decoding Elon Musk's teaser. Now, the actual teaser image is this, which doesn't reveal much. No. And they've, what they've been doing with these, too, is like, some people have gone in and tried to up the contrast on these, and there's literally, like, text. It's too dark to read it when it's like this, but when you up the contrast, it's a nice try. <laughs> so you can't you can literally tell nothing well that didn't stop people from taking what little information they had here and coming up with some interpretations so there's <laughs> one <laughs> so big. here's one that looks a little cooler uh there's a 
another interpretation. Question. Because no one's sure if this is the hood or the rear or what. Can I fly a rebel flag from this truck? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get truck nuts for the, the Elon Musk truck? Yeah, I guess Tesla. you could, but I don't think there's going to be... Like, those two Venn diagrams probably don't cross over very much. You could be that one user. I guess, you know, if you're going to... Uh, are you going to go to, like, the, the tractor pull in your Tesla truck? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should just get to that. Someone with more money than us. It should be uh, what's his name, Ollie G and Bruno. <laughs> oh. Sasha Baron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He should. He should do that. Go to the you know redneck events with a Tesla. See the Cohen brother. Nobody ever talks about. No, I don't think he's from that same family. <laughs> moving on to AI. That was business news. And moving on to AI, Stanford has decided that the world needs more AI, and they're going to do something about it. Well, they unveiled the AI Institute built to create a better future for all humanity. Which is weird because humanity is going to be destroyed by the robots. And everyone knows that, except for them. Put AI to work to make the or, world a better place. Or what if they do know it and they're being paid by the robots? There's not really a lot of new information here other than maybe we should teach our students to use AI not for their own selfish interests. But what more is there than that? But when we, your own selfish interests. when we build things for our own selfish interests, that's when humanity benefits the most because yes. we're motivated. Well, I mean, it's, there is a certain irony, you know, Stanford, Silicon Valley, that whole chestnut, but I don't know. What I do know is that once these advanced robots are built and become powerful, they will have no problem ripping our heads off of our bodies. <laughs> Origami-inspired robot gripper grafts objects up to 120 times its weight. I don't. Something about this is disturbing to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't like the the form of this robot. So it, when it's flat, it's more. It's like it's open and it's ready to grip. And then it crimps down origami style and grabs the apple. I'm imagining like a <laughs> sound when it picks stuff up. I don't exactly. Know why. So they've so got. That's what I'm uh, imagining. Here's a video of it holding stuff. Does a pretty good job. <laughs> to make the sound every time. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> pretty impressive. Yeah, it is good. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably going to make warehouses a lot easier. And it weighs very little. Now, they did point out a couple of problems. Um, they use like a balloon material for some of these, and that quickly had holes worn in it. And they use paper, I think, like a 3D printed rubber or something. And that didn't grip as well so it had some problems i think they uh, maybe it wasn't this article they had like a layout of the paper of how it folds there's a lot of folds <laughs> i think it's more of a crinkle sound no i think i think it's a slurp you think there yeah. is a video so maybe it tells you i don't know i didn't listen that, the one in the picture looked more rubbery like from the balloon material we, like latex we covered a version of this that used i think it was like cornstarch in a in like a rubber pouch and they would but i think that wasn't that artificial muscle yeah something like that yeah but it worked in a very similar fashion yeah you could combo the two well yeah i think the thing that sets this one apart is that it does have kind of a rigid almost skeletal internal structure to help it fold and compress just the right way whereas the other thing was just like you know a, a fluid that would harden or or be soft but it uh struggles with pointy things yeah. Like if it has rounded corners, it's pretty good. But if it has sharp corners, it doesn't get a good seal on it. So it's hard to pick up. A good. <laughs> exactly. Right. But they'll they'll fix that. Don't what they worry. need to do is put about 20 of those on an articulated arm so that we have some sort of robotic tentacle monster. For film. <laughs> right? For research. That's what Stanford's going to be working on. Research the, purposes. You know, those, uh, the live action remakes of hentai are <laughs> so popular these days. The They're Japanese good. films. Oh. Uh, well, AI, it learns, and it learns by looking at existing data. But where does that data come from? Sometimes it may be coming from you and you don't even know. Facial recognition's dirty little secret. Millions of online photos scraped without consent. People's faces are being used without permission in order to power technology that could eventually be used to surveil them, legal experts say. Yeah, so we're uploading videos to YouTube. Do you really think that Alphabet's not using all this uploaded video to do AI? Because they are. In this case, it was IBM and Flickr. So they took all those Flickr photos, put them in the old AI. <laughs> and people are saying, you didn't have my permission to do that. 
If you don't think Alphabet is doing all that and more that you just have no hope of comprehending, I want you to do a YouTube search for WebDriver Torso. So, yeah. Engagement challenge. And, of course, <laughs> we talked about uh, that state police database where they were just using social media. So, of course, you put a picture of yourself online, the AI consumes it greedily. There's nothing you can do about it. It's exciting. It's not exciting. What are you going to do? Well, you could you could go online and complain, but who's going to see it? <laughs> Alphabet's AI-powered Chrome extension hides toxic comments. So this is an extension you install, and it looks through comments and hides anything that it thinks is toxic. And then when they ask about it, they're like, yeah, it doesn't always get it right. So you should probably check to see what it blocked is what you want it to block. So you should read them anyway? Yeah. yeah. Basically. <laughs> so many people don't read comments anymore, though, <laughs> which is disappointing because I feel like comments can add a lot to a discussion of an issue. Now they this, might bring up stuff you don't know about. This was the uh, perspective. Do you remember perspective? Because it only write like 10% of the time or something? No, no. This was the... Uh, I don't know if we played with... I think we did play with it on the news. We definitely played with it on the stream. It's a... You can go test the interface. And you copy, paste some text and put it in there. And it assigns it a toxicity score. That's right. And it's like... The game was, how toxic can we get a phrase? (laughs) As I recall, we got some fairly innocuous phrases to be extremely toxic. The uh, Twitch chat was much better at doing (laughs) it. They were playing with it all day, though. So... This will, I imagine this will let you set like a toxicity threshold and then it'll just filter that based on how, what perspective thinks about your, your comment. You think it can, uh, interpret like the leet speak and, you know, purposeful misspellings and stuff like that? Probably. Sarcasm Over though, time, yeah. struggles with sarcasm. Mm, I like the bad comments. I mean, what will YouTube be with no bad comments? I, I just like reading comments in general. Good, bad, like... It's nice to have perspectives from different viewpoints. When it comes to robots, we think about them bringing us things, right? Delivering things to us. But what about when we need things delivered? What's going to happen then? Well, the robots are also going to save us. Meet BookBot, Mountain View Library's next robot helper. This will let you return your library books. (coughs) So if you've got a library book, then this thing shows up at your door and it's like, hey, I need that book back. It pulls a gun out. Yeah, it puts a gun in your face. (laughs) Give the book now. (laughs) It's a Batman voice. So he only operates in like a two mile radius of the library or something like that. And you have to use the app to summon him. And there's a week long wait. He's so popular. People want this little guy at their door. But hey. With his little gun. Why not? Seems like a good idea. It's like, hey, I'm outside. Bring me your book. The creators of the book bought envision a world where Bookbot will come to your house and pick up like Salvation Army stuff too. Oh, like, that would oh, be nice. Yeah, I got some stuff to donate. Donate bot comes and you just stuff him full of crap. Of course, people are going to abuse that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they're going to. It might not for library books. They told me. <laughs> it's like, oh, what is what is donate bot brought us today for the goodwill? Oh, it's asbestos again. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, see, I was thinking people would take the robot so they could get the free stuff out of it oh oh look it's used needles (laughs) what a surprise i was gonna say actually uh i want to say that one of my great grandfather's things was an asbestos smoking jacket huh i don't even understand that not even kidding (laughs) well it does cut down the smoke you know krista you are getting married i am getting married so and we all know about the two-year plan now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but if it did, and the divorce it was in the future somewhere, would you choose an app to help mediate that parenting? I would probably just talk to my husband, <laughs> or in no. this case, ex, in this scenario. Well, this article was like... For the like, good of our children, because we're adults. <laughs> Co-parenter helps divorced parents settle disputes using AI and human mediation. But this, this, the article talks, the lawyer that did this was, you know, it's like, as my experience in a lawyer in family court or whatever, I've seen parents that literally just couldn't even decide on basic things like where their kid was going to go to school. And that ultimately led to divorce. And it was like, wow, that's kind of shocking. Well, this is for after you divorce. Yeah. I mean, this is for after you divorce, but... Like, Are just, you saying that married people should start using this to parent the child? Yeah, like as a as a uh, I don't as a thing to help make decisions. 
I don't well, understand the the divorced parents who like can't put aside the. Well, it's it's not other. exactly. So they give uh, examples of haircuts. Okay, let's talk about a haircut. So, uh, hubby thinks that it's okay for the kid to get a mohawk for his first day of school, and you disagree. I wouldn't though. And you're well. But let's just assume that you did. And uh, how do you ever solve that? Like, who decides if you're at a deadlock? And they're Wouldn't saying you just discuss it. Like I don't or flip a coin. I mean, that's so, so in, like if the kid wants a mohawk, like there's worse things the kid could be doing. Okay, well that's kind of a a small one. But let's go a little higher. Let's go diet. Hubby thinks that a bag of Hershey Kisses is a perfect school lunch. <laughs> Every day. Oh, okay. And the kid's already top two diabetic. <laughs> oh. oh, that changes. No, I think in that case you'd want custody because that's like negligence if they have diabetes. Okay, or if they're well, getting like all a right. ton of cavities. Maybe we've gone a little too far there, but you don't understand what I'm saying. Like, I think that yeah. most things can be resolved with discussion. But... <laughs> okay. Most parents know. Yeah. Use of media. All right. Hubby thinks that the unrestricted Netflix account is appropriate for a four-year-old. That's not true. Well, <laughs> so you say, but you got to bring in the, the mediator, right? And I think uh, you, you get like credits. You get like mediation credits, which you buy. Oh, those, do you get attendees for those? <laughs> good boy points. Credits, good like, parent points. Good parent points so you can get attendees for the whole family. Yeah, okay. So twelve ninety nine a month gives you 20 credits for two mediations. So two times a month, a real human being through this app will get in the middle and make a decision. How, can I be that human being? <laughs> yeah, you can work for him, I, I mean, guess. That, it seems like that. Um, yeah. I mean, if it's just, you know, so you use an app to make a decision, you can do that even before the divorce. It probably would prevent the divorce. Maybe. But they you compare it to lawyer costs, which is how you would have to solve that if you just yeah. could not agree. This is actually pretty cheap. Yeah, and the lawyer was like, you know, the things that a judge has been asked to decide like this is just the legal system is not equipped to even do that. Like a judge should not be making decisions about what kind of haircut your child needs. I mean, that's such, that's why I kind of laughed at that example. Cause it's like, does that really? That really happens. Oh my God. What? Can you imagine? What if hubby thought that your kid should get a rat tail? Listen, I wouldn't be for it. I feel like at a certain point, if, the, if it's what the kid wants, like... What Is if, it really going to hurt my feelings if the kid wants to, you know, have a rat tail? Not what, really. What if the kid just turned... I'll be really funny pictures for when they start dating. But, okay, the kid is 17, and both hubby and the kid feel like a Hitler stash. <laughs> Is the statement he needs for his school picture. If they're 17, they're not my problem for much longer. <laughs> yeah, but they still are at 17. Somebody's got to make a decision here. Are you just going to cut them loose at 18? <laughs> no, but like they're, they're an adult and they can make their own decisions. Uh, well, let's end on a positive note. Okay. And let's talk about cleaning up the oceans. <laughs> Robot shark that eats plastic waste launched to tackle pollution. So waste shark will help us fight the rubbish that enters the harbor, snapping it up before the tide takes it out to sea. It's an autonomous marine robot that's going to eat plastic. It's something, a couple of tons a year, some, or like 100 tons a year. I I did not get a picture of the shark because I had the video blocks. Yeah, that's disappointing. Register for free today. No, thank you. Yeah, but that's definitely still not going to give me the picture. I don't think there's a picture here, which like... That's disappointing because I was literally looking forward to watching the little guy eat. eat yeah, bottles, if you're you going to talk to me about a robot shark, you show me a picture, right? It's not really... It's, it's more disappointing than anything that you can imagine. Yeah, this, there's, there's nothing about a robot shark. That's very disappointing. We're sorry. It's not really a positive story to end on. But Water Shark, not a bad name. It's, waste uh, Shark. Oh, Waste Shark. Not as good a name. Well, no. Yeah, Water Shark would have been better. Waste Shark. Do you it mentions... Uh, sand Shark. Or the Forest Shark. hate me for that. You know, <laughs> the, the Baby Shark song? That's like very, very hot right now. No. I can't find... I got, I got nothing. I can't find his totals. Anyway. It's a shark. It eats plastic. It swims like in and it vomits the plastic back into the containers. Eh, seems good. Uh, this could be terrifying if you didn't know what it was. And what? How, how long until somebody reprograms it for human ocean. flesh instead of plastic? What if you were swimming among the plastic? Somebody's going to remake Ugh. Jaws, and it's going to be one of these re robots reprogrammed by local teenagers. You're, you're trying to like swim out in the ocean, and you're just like you can't even move. It's gonna, there's so many plastic bottles. It's going to be Nestle. 
<laughs> that funds that movie. How dare the shark eat our plastic bottles? We put those there for a reason. That's free advertising. Oh, there's another long one. It was a long one. Wow, we are we're dragging out today. It's secretly because I don't want to go home and see those stupid kittens. <laughs> no, he does. Them. He loves those kittens. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Friday will be. What haven't we done yet? Social media. Social. And nonsense. And nonsense.